Chapter 8 Cindy slipped into the chair beside Sissy, who was already looking through the book of songs. What are you singing tonight? Sissy shrugged. I'm trying to decide. She looked back and forth between Trey and Cindy. You two look happy. Trey brought Cindy's fingers to his lips. I'm married to an amazing, beautiful woman. Of course, I'm happy. He slid into the chair on the other side of Cindy. Cindy looked at Sissy. Something weird is going to happen here tonight, and I just want you to be ready for it. Sissy raised an eyebrow, looking up from the book. What's up? Trey's sister, Penny, just got here from Texas. And she brought someone she thinks would be perfect for Trey. What the heck? I'll kick both their butts. Are they skinny little things? Cause if they are, I'll take them both. Cindy grinned, knowing her friend had her best interests at heart. They are, but that's not the thing. They're coming to karaoke tonight, and tomorrow they'll spend the day with Trey. Why are you putting up with this? What's wrong with you? I'll hit them both over the head with a brick, and we'll throw them in the lake. Cindy laughed. There's a cop three tables over, and he's looking this way. I think you need to calm your butt down. They promised they'd leave if he spent the day with them, so he's going to. I just want them both gone. I guess I can see that. Do I get to meet them? Can I poison their food? Yes, and no. We're not poisoning anyone tonight, and anyway, you're off duty. We're going to sit here, eat cheese curds, and enjoy ourselves. Fine. Sissy looked back down at her book. They'd better be glad there's a cop here. Is it one I know? Can I convince him they need to die? Cindy looked at the police officer a bit more closely. I don't know him, and he's got a girl with him who's looking at him like he hung the moon. Sissy wrinkled her nose. Lovely. I told Lashiel to get started finding me someone, just so you know. I'm done being single. Glancing over at Trey, Cindy grinned. I hope she does as well for you as she did for me. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw Penny approaching with Jean. And here they are. Penny pushed Jean to sit right beside Trey. She took the open chair beside Sissy. You're pretty stupid if you think sitting beside me is safe, Sissy said with a hiss, leaning close to Penny. Penny looked at Cindy with wide eyes, as if she were asking what it was she'd done wrong. Penny, this is my best friend, Sissy Rivers. She's the manager here. Penny didn't offer her hand to shake, looking down her long nose at Sissy. Oh, you manage a bowling alley. Quaint. Sissy immediately took a napkin and started scrubbing away at Penny's nose. I'll get it for you, she yelled. Ouch. Get off me. Penny pushed Sissy back. Oh, I think I got it. What did you get? Penny frowned at the woman she obviously had decided was insane. The dirt on your nose that had you looking at it so funny, of course. What did you think I was getting? Sissy asked the question with a look of confusion in her eyes. Penny looked away from Sissy. Has a server been over to get our orders yet? Cindy grinned. This is a bowling alley. You go to the counter over there and ask for food if you want it. Penny huffed, getting to her feet. I'm going to get us some drinks and food, she said to Jean. Why don't you see if you can get my brother talking so we can take him home with us? No one should have to live here. She shuddered delicately as she walked off. Sissy looked at Cindy. Did she just insult Wisconsin? I'd take more offense if we didn't spend our teenage years doing the same thing. I kind of like it now, though. If I'd known she was coming, I'd have worn my cheese head. Cindy realized then that she had yet to hear Jean saying anything. She was pretty enough, but she was so quiet. Was she really that shy? Jean, it's nice to meet you. I'm Cindy. Jean's eyes widened as if she was shocked to have someone actually speak to her. Hello. 
Penny says you're the enemy, and I shouldn't talk to you. Jean's voice was soft and her words so matter-of-fact that Cindy almost didn't believe she'd actually spoken them. Cindy tilted her head to one side. And what do you think? Am I the enemy? Jean frowned, as if she hadn't expected to be asked for an opinion of her own. Well, you're married to the man I'm supposed to marry, so I guess so. Cindy looked at Sissy, wondering if her friend was hearing what she was. Why are you supposed to marry Trey? Because Penny said so. Penny's really smart, and she knows a lot. I listen to her whenever she talks. Jean's eyes were so innocent it hurt. Cindy wanted to run across the alley and stab a fork in Penny's eye. How dare she set this girl up to be hurt? Cindy's heart suddenly went out to the girl. She wasn't the smartest girl at the table. How long have you known Penny? Trey had closed his eyes as if he were trying to avoid the situation entirely. Jean shrugged. I met her after Christmas. I see. Well, Trey and I are really married, and we're going to stay married. Penny's wrong about that. You can't just believe someone who says you're going to marry a man you've never met. Why not? That's what you did, Penny said from behind Cindy. Don't listen to her, Jean. You know you're the one who's supposed to marry Trey. Jean looked at Trey, seeming to think about what Penny had just said. Do you want to be married to me or Cindy? she asked simply. Her words were slow, but perfectly understandable. I'm already married to Cindy, he said simply. Why would I get a divorce so I could marry a stranger? Jean nodded. I promise to spend tomorrow with you and kiss you a lot. Is that okay? It's okay to spend time with me, but it's not okay to kiss me. Cindy would get mad about that. Trey brought Cindy's fingers to his lips, and he kissed them softly. He needed Jean to understand he was already taken. Sissy leaned over and whispered to Cindy, I want to kill Penny more than ever. Jean is just plain sad. She stood up and walked over to the girl who was the karaoke hostess. Every week Sissy would sing a song to kick off the night. The hostess stood, her eyes on the paper in front of her. Sissy Rivers, manager of this fine establishment, is going to sing I've Got a Crush on You. She walked over and started the music while Sissy picked up the microphone. Penny looked almost scared as Sissy held the microphone and waited for the music. Cindy grinned, knowing her friend was about to shock everyone in the place who had never heard her sing, including Trey. It was his face she watched as her friend sang the opening notes. How glad the many millions of Toms and Dicks and Williams would be to capture me. Trey's jaw dropped and he, along with all the other new people in the room and many of the regulars, watched Sissy belt out the song as if she'd been born on a stage. She hit every note, her sweet, sultry voice filling up the room. She automatically swayed to the music as she sang, her hips moving back and forth. Cindy wished she'd dress up for karaoke nights, because she was so good at what she did. She glanced around watching people's reactions to her friend as she always did, and noticed the cop a couple of tables over seemed to be unable to take his eyes off Sissy. She wished Sissy could just see herself through someone else's eyes for one moment, because she was an incredible woman who didn't seem to realize just how special she was. Asterisk. Once they were in bed that night, Cindy snuggled close to Trey, her head on his shoulder. Sissy floored me, he said. Who would have thought she could sing that way? She's been like that since we were little. She had the singing part in every school pageant from kindergarten on. She's a terrible actress, but she was the lead in every school musical, because no one could compare to her voice. It's like she becomes a different person once you put a microphone in her hand. I was very impressed. He stroked her hair, happy to be holding her again, even if nothing was going to happen between them. I can't believe my sister dragged Jean a thousand miles when she knew I was already married. She's a sweet girl, but she doesn't seem much older than ten. I have a feeling that's all the older she is intellectually. I don't know if your sister has done anything like this before, 
but I think bringing Jean here is almost criminal. It's just wrong. Trey sighed. It's her way of insulting me and calling me a nerd. She always finds a girl who has something wrong with them to do this with. In high school, she started by choosing the most popular girls who would laugh at me. Then she would pick the girls who were just a bit odd-looking. I never minded. I wouldn't hurt anyone. And then she moved on to people who weren't obviously different until you talked to them. There was the girl who couldn't seem to talk about anything except the show Friends. She had every episode memorized, and she would only quote the show in response. Then the next one was severely depressed. Everything I said, she'd start crying hysterically. Jean is not the first who was really very naive and slow. I feel bad for her, but I can't seem to stop Penny from doing it. I've talked to my mother, who told me that all the girls were perfectly lovely, and I need to appreciate my sister more. Is Penny younger? She's a year younger, and for some reason, she's always hated me. It's weird, but it's just what she does. My mom is a pain, because she refuses to believe Penny would ever do anything maliciously. I can't find anything Penny does that's not malicious. He sighed. She's a lot of the reason I decided to have Lachille match me up. Yes, I wanted a good marriage and love and companionship, but I also just needed to get away from Penny's matchmaking. I was sure that once I was married, she'd stay away. I would have warned you if I'd had any idea she'd do this. Well, I guess the next time you marry some random girl that you meet at the altar, you'll need to tell her. Not happening. He pressed a kiss to her shoulder, through her nightgown. I think I'm done marrying random strangers. I'm pretty happy with the one I got the first time. He smiled. Speaking of which, one of the men at the bowling alley asked me for Sissy's phone number. It was her singing. Every karaoke night, people ask for her phone number, but none of them ever find the guts to call her. They think she's too good for them for whatever reason. Okay, well, I didn't feel like I should give out her phone number anyway, so I didn't. Sissy has started the ball rolling with Lachille, hasn't she? He hit his chuckle at his own accidental joke. Ball rolling for a bowling alley manager. Cindy nodded. Yeah. She interviewed at the same time I did, but she was going to wait for six months to make sure I was happy. She called Lachille today and told her to make it happen, though. I'm not sure why, but she's suddenly done waiting. I really didn't expect her to go through with it. You didn't? But wasn't it part of the deal you made? Yeah, it was, but I didn't expect her to do it. She shrugged. I've been waiting for her to come to me with the reason she couldn't possibly let Lachille set her up since our wedding day. I'm surprised. She'll be a good wife. Do you think Lachille will be able to find two men who will agree to move to the middle of nowhere? That was Sissy's agreement with Lachille, just like mine. Both of us have our businesses here, so we needed men who could come to us. You never know. She might find someone. He turned to her in the dark, pulling her closer. Enough talk about Sissy. It's time for you to give me one fact I don't already know about you. Cindy thought about it for a moment. I love to sing karaoke, but I'm terrible at it. I will sometimes get up on the stage with Sissy and sway in the background and lip sync. He laughed. I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a little boy, because I was willing to do anything in the world to get away from my crazy sister. Cindy kissed him softly. I'll protect you from her. She's skinny. I can take her. Thank you. You made today so much easier than it would have been with someone else. I did what I had to do. The real victim here is Jean. I'm glad you can see that. Cindy tried not to worry as she went about her daily routine that day. Trey kissed her sweetly before going outside to work on the snowmobiles. Both Penny and Jean had shown up for breakfast. Penny was as demanding as she'd expected her to be. There was something seriously wrong with Trey's sister. I need more coffee. 
Penny said from across the room while she was talking to an older couple who were checking out that morning. Breakfast was set up buffet-style, but Cindy handled refilling drinks if people asked. There was coffee on the counter, and most people got their own, but she wasn't surprised that Penny was demanding. Excuse me, Cindy said sweetly as she took the pot of coffee and refilled Penny's drink with a smile. Is there anything else I can get for you? Penny frowned, obviously wanting to get a rise out of Cindy by treating her like a servant. Yes, would you get me another plate of eggs and some orange juice please? Certainly. Thankfully there wasn't a huge crowd most Thursday mornings, because she was just serving scrambled eggs and bacon with French toast. People liked muffin Tuesdays and scone Fridays. They were the days when she had a real breakfast crowd. She filled a plate with eggs and poured a glass of juice, carrying them over to Penny. Anything else? She wasn't really supposed to serve the plates of food, but she wanted to annoy Penny by not refusing to do anything. Not right now. Penny glared down at her eggs. Jean, do you need anything else? Cindy asked, her voice softening as she talked to the simple girl. Would you mind getting me some more French toast? With syrup? I'd be happy to. Cindy hurried off to get the food. She really didn't mind serving Jean's breakfast, because she felt bad for the girl, traveling all that way to marry a man who was already married. By the time the dining room had completely emptied for the morning, and it was time to do dishes, Cindy was already exhausted. Keeping a smile on her face as she served Penny had been hard. She had promised a picnic lunch for Trey, Penny, and Jean, so she did the dishes and immediately fried some chicken and whipped up a potato salad. She made a pitcher of lemonade as well as a jug of iced tea, putting it all together into a large picnic hamper along with some brownies frosted with a cream cheese icing. At 11.30, she walked out behind the shed to deliver the food. Just as she turned the corner around the side of the shed, she saw Penny push Jean so that she fell onto Trey. It was obvious what had happened, so she didn't say a word, simply setting the basket down. There was no doubt in Cindy's mind Penny had been watching for her, and had timed the push perfectly. Have a good lunch, Cindy said sweetly, walking off without another word. Penny stared after her with her mouth hanging open. Just before she was out of earshot, Cindy heard Penny say, I told you she doesn't care about you, Trey. If she did, she would have wanted to scratch Jean's eyes out. Cindy just kept walking. Hopefully Trey didn't believe his snake of a sister, and even if he did, they could sort it out later. She hadn't been happy to see Jean lying atop Trey, but knowing she'd been pushed, and poor Trey had been an innocent bystander, certainly helped. When she got to the bowling alley, she went to her regular booth and sat down, waiting for Sissy to bring on the cheese curds. It would take several root beers to drown out the nonsense of the past couple of days. Sissy dropped off drinks and food a minute later, ran back to the kitchen, and came back to slip in across from her. I need to hear everything about that which of a sister Trey has. What the heck? Who brings a potential bride to her brother just days after he marries? Seriously? Cindy groaned, grabbing her root beer and drinking half of it down. She's such an idiot. She told her friend about what she'd just witnessed while dropping off the picnic hamper. And the worst part is, it really got to me a little. You know, seeing another woman lying on top of your husband is just weird. It would be. Sissy shook her head. Did you have that talk with Trey? Cause you two seemed great last night. We did have that talk, and he didn't like it, but we're working through it. We're giving it a week to get to know each other better, and then resuming all newlywed boinkage. Boinkage? Tell me about boinkage. Sissy leaned in and stared at Cindy, waiting for a response. It's fun. That's all you're getting from me. Cindy popped a cheese curd in her mouth. What is it about these things that keeps me going? No idea. I guess, because they're so good? Probably. Cindy took a big swig of root beer. 
Anyway, if Penny is true to her word, she and Jean will take off tomorrow and life will get back to normal. What is normal? You haven't even been married a week. You have no normal yet. Well, that's true. Did you realize some guy approached Trey last night for your phone number? Cindy asked, trying to keep the subject off her marriage. Sissy shrugged. He heard me sing. They all want my number, and none of them ever call me. What would you do if one of them did? I really have no idea. Probably tell them that I can't sing all the time, because I have a bowling alley to manage, but they're welcome to come for karaoke every Wednesday night. We make good money on food on karaoke night. Cindy grinned. I know you do. Any word from Lachille? Has she found you the perfect man yet? Sissy sighed and shook her head. Not yet. I'll have to live vicariously through you. You have enough tallywhackers and boinkage in your life for both of us. Not this week. Cindy couldn't believe how quickly she'd become used to making love. It had only been two days, and she felt like it was a month. That's your own fault. What kind of married woman feels guilty about sexing her husband? From what I've heard, most feel guilty for not doing it enough. Oh, hush. Cindy pushed her glass toward Sissy. I need a refill. Or six. I'm going to drown my sorrows in beer. Root beer, of course. Well, yeah. What goes better with cheese curd? Asterisk. Cindy wasn't certain what to expect when she got back to the band B, but it certainly wasn't what she saw. Penny was running toward the house with liquid dripping down her face, and Jean was hurrying after her. I'm sorry, Penny. Penny spun around and faced her friend. What were you thinking? Well, you said that if I was sweet and did everything that Trey asked, he'd forget all about Cindy. Jean waved to Cindy, who wasn't hiding the fact that she was listening intently. Hi, Cindy. He told me that if you pushed me into him one more time, I should dump the pitcher of lemonade over your head. So I did. You were right. It made him happy. Cindy sighed, knowing she needed to help whether she wanted to or not. She looked Penny up and down. My clothes will be a little big on you, but they'll work to get you back to your hotel so you can pack up and go back to Texas. You can use my shower. Penny looked like she wanted to refuse, but she nodded, accepting the offer. Fine. Where is it? Cindy led the other women through the halls to the bedroom she shared with Trey down off the kitchen. Bathrooms through here. Feel free to use whatever you need. Let me get you some clothes. She picked out some shorts with an elastic waist and a tank top for her sister-in-law before leading Jean off to the kitchen. Do you want to help me bake some cookies? Jean nodded. I love baking cookies. Cindy always kept a fresh supply of cookies on the front desk for people to grab as they walked through. She made cookies at least twice a week. When are you guys leaving to go home, she asked. Jean shrugged. Penny said we're not leaving until I have a ring on my finger, but Trey loves you. I think we should go tomorrow. Did you tell Penny that you were going to leave tomorrow? No. Penny's kind of scary sometimes. Jean whispered the words as if she was afraid Penny would hear them over the sound of the shower. Cindy sighed. How would you like it if Trey drove you to the airport tomorrow and made sure you got on a plane to go home? Is there someone there who would pick you up at the airport? Yes, my boyfriend would. Cindy blinked a few times. Your boyfriend? If you have a boyfriend, why do you want to marry Trey? I don't. Penny wants me to marry Trey and says I'm supposed to marry him. I just want to go home to Nathan. Cindy did her best not to laugh. Did you tell Penny about Nathan? Jean shook her head. No, she'd get mad at me. She might. Okay, we'll talk to Trey after we bake cookies, and I'll get him to drive you to Madison. Then you can go home to Nathan. Nathan loves me. 
he's going to buy me a ring. Just as soon as he has enough money. I'm so happy to hear that, Jean. Do you want to have a big wedding? Yes, I do. Would you be my maid of honor? I like you. Jean frowned. Penny might get mad if I ask you and not her, but you're nice to me, and Penny isn't. Cindy hugged Jean. I'd be happy to be your maid of honor, and we won't tell Penny. It'll be fine. She didn't really want to take a trip to Texas, but maybe the other woman would forget about her promise. If not, she could certainly go. Trey popped his head in the kitchen then. Oh, cookies? Cindy laughed. Yes, cookies. Why don't you run upstairs and shower the filth off of you? Your sister is trying to get lemonade out of her hair in my shower. Room 4 is still empty. Trey winked at her. I'll get the key from behind the counter. You do that. We need to make plans for Jean to get back to her boyfriend in Texas anyway. Trey gave her a baffled look before he walked away. His sister was something else. Chapter 9 The following evening, Trey walked into the house and sank into one of the chairs in the kitchen, watching Cindy finish fixing supper for him. Jean is on a plane to DFW Airport. She chattered nonstop about how much she loves Nathan the whole way to Madison. He looked tired. Cindy rolled her eyes. What about Penny? Jean had spent the night at the Band B because she'd been afraid to be alone with Penny after she'd admitted she had a boyfriend. She's on her way back to Texas as well, but she's driving. Alone. I called my dad, and he's going to get her in to see a counselor. He agrees with me that there's got to be something wrong with her. No one is that mean and twisted without a reason. Although, Penny has always been an odd duck. He wasn't sure if he should detest his sister, feel sorry for her, or just be glad she was gone. He was glad she was finally going to get help, though. I'm glad he's going to find some help for her. When I talked to Nathan, he seemed thrilled to find out Jean was on her way back. She hadn't explained the situation well. Trey sighed. How could she? She doesn't seem to really understand why she was here anyway. He shook his head. I'm glad Dad is going to take Penny in hand. Mom is still denying Penny would deliberately do anything mean, but that girl is a piece of work. Cindy put the last of the food on the table and sat down across from Trey. I'm just glad that's over. It's amazing what a nice feeling it is to have them gone. It is. What are we going to do tonight? Stay in? He liked to stay in, but he knew women liked to dress up and go out. Well, we live in a small town. We can either stay in, or go listen to a new band at the bowling alley. Sissy brings in live entertainment on Friday nights. He shrugged. That's up to you. I will say though, I never thought I'd live in a place where the center of entertainment was a bowling alley. I thought it was like this everywhere. When Sissy and I got to college, one of the first questions we asked was, where's the bowling alley? We got some laughs. She grinned at how naive she'd been when they'd first graduated. At least she wasn't the only one, though. Sissy had been just as backward as she had. He grinned. I'm sure you did. He took her hand in his. So do you want to do the bowling alley, or do you want to stay in? She thought about it for a moment. If they went to the bowling alley, it would be loud, and they wouldn't have as easy of a time talking to each other, but if they stayed in, she would have a hard time keeping her hands off him. Let's go to the bowling alley, if you don't mind. Not at all. Truthfully, he'd been hoping she would be willing to stay in, hoping he'd be able to talk her into bed. Of course, if they were in public, he would have an easier time doing as she'd asked and behaving himself. Thank you. After dinner, I'll put on some girl clothes, and we'll go. He frowned. We have to dress up for this? Can I just put on some jeans and cowboy boots? She nodded. I like the cowboy look. Asterisk. 
An hour later, they walked into the bowling alley hand in hand. Cindy had texted Sissy to save them a spot, and they wandered over to the booth where her friend had taken up residence. Busy tonight. She said, slipping into the booth across from Sissy and sliding all the way in, so Trey could sit beside her. Sissy nodded. There's a wait for all the lanes, and the kitchen is backed up. New band is good. Cindy listened for a moment. They are. Country. Cindy grinned at her friend. You going to do a song with them? Sissy sighed. They asked me to sing Fancy. I'm not sure, though. Trey saw the man who had asked for Sissy's number on Wednesday evening, watching them from another booth. He was alone this time. I'll be right back. Going to go talk to someone. Cindy watched him go. Who does he know to talk to? He hasn't lived in this town for a week. No idea. Sissy shrugged. I think I am going to go sing. Do it. Cindy watched Trey talking to the cop from the other night. What was he up to? When Trey wrote something down for the man, she frowned. He hadn't given Sissy's number out, had he? Did he even have Sissy's number? He was up to something, and she didn't like being in the dark. When Trey came back a minute later, he slid back in beside Cindy. What was that about? Trey shrugged. I talked to him the other night. He's a nice guy. Cindy decided not to press him. He'd tell her what he wanted to tell her when he was ready. So about yesterday. I saw you lying on the ground with a girl on top of you. What was up with that? Trey looked at her with wide eyes. When she'd said nothing about it the night before, he thought he was off the hook. Penny pushed her. I realized that. It doesn't mean I liked seeing another girl on top of you. Oh really? Were you jealous? Cindy took his question seriously. Yes, I really was. Even knowing that she'd been pushed, and you had no interest in her, it hit me right in the gut. Did you like it? Trey didn't know how to answer that. Of course he liked having a girl on top of him, but it was Jean, and she seemed like a child to him. Not much. I didn't either. He grinned. Does that mean you like me? At least a little? Cindy laughed. I like you a lot more than a little. She knew it wasn't the time or the place, but she felt the need to say what was on her heart. I think I'm falling in love with you. He just stared at her for a moment, as if afraid to believe what he was hearing. Really? She nodded solemnly. Really? I had no idea it could happen so fast, though. He cupped her cheek in his hand, leaning down to kiss her. I think I'm falling for you, too. You're an awfully special woman. She rested her head contentedly on his shoulder for a moment, lifting it only when the band started to play fancy. Oh, I think Sissy's about to sing. She looked toward the stage, and Trey looked toward the man he'd just talked to. Every time she sings, it's like seeing a new piece of her. I'm amazed at how good she is. Did she consider a career in singing? He asked, listening attentively. Cindy nodded. She has a minor in music with a voice concentration. She shrugged. But she majored in management. She thought she was going to have time to try to sing professionally, but her dad decided to retire just as we graduated. I think it was my grandfather that spurred that decision on. How so? It didn't make sense to him that her grandfather had gotten Sissy's dad to retire. Well, Grandpa died without seeing his dream come true. He wanted to buy an RV and travel around the U.S. But it never happened. So when Grandpa died, Sissy's dad said he was going to live his dream and not die before he had the chance. Trey frowned. That makes sense, but it keeps Sissy from living her dream. Sissy was really good. She had the kind of voice he expected to hear on the radio, not in a bowling alley in the middle of nowhere. I think Sissy's happy right where she is. 
She sings a couple of times per week and is something of a local legend. She's got a good life. She sighed. I just hope Lachiel finds her a husband soon. I don't know that Sissy needs Lachiel to find her a man. There are so many here who admire her. Yeah, but none of them will approach her. It's weird. It's obvious they have feelings for her. Every man in the place watches her, but none will actually ask her out. I think if they did, she wouldn't know what to do. Sissy's never really dated. She shrugged. No, I think she needs Lachiel. Sissy had sweat standing out on her forehead when she came back. I'm getting a gross coke and some cheese curds. You guys want anything? She seemed to be full of life in a way she wasn't usually. Root beer, and I'll share your curds, Cindy responded. I'll have a coke. Sissy hurried off to the kitchen, knowing they'd get their food faster if she put the order in herself. What's a gross coke? Trey asked. Oh, that's what Sissy calls Diet Coke. Her dad started it years ago, so she just went with it. Shortly after Sissy came back with drinks for them, the band started playing a slow song. Trey wasn't much of a dancer, but he could certainly sway back and forth. There were couples everywhere dancing, so he slid out of the booth, holding his hand out for Cindy. Dance with me. Cindy looked at Sissy, not wanting to leave her friend alone. You mind? Go dance with your husband. Your newlyweds. Enjoy. Sissy took a sip of her drink, watching them. Cindy followed Trey to the middle of the floor, going into his arms. They swayed slowly back and forth to the music. This is the first time we've danced, he said, a little surprised. She smiled. Well, we haven't even known each other a week yet. He shook his head. What did I do before you were in my life? Wept copiously, she responded quickly, feeling his laugh against her. Asterisk. Every spare minute of their weekend, Trey and Cindy worked on the snowmobiles. I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have to help with these, she told him on Sunday afternoon. I don't mind working on them, but I hate being away from the guests so much. Trey nodded. You know, I think it's been good for us, though. Cindy laughed. I had a teacher in college say that you never really knew the person you were married to until you built a piece of furniture together. I think this qualifies. The teacher had been one she truly admired. It does. You've now heard me cuss as I dropped heavy things on my feet, and you've seen me get frustrated with things not going together like they should. So, what do you think? Are you going to throw me back like a fish that's too small to keep? Oh, definitely. You've been a real pill. Truthfully, he'd kept it together really well throughout. They'd snapped at each other a couple of times, but that was to be expected. I do think I know you a lot better through this. He looked up at her with a grin. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? She rested her fingers against his cheek, loving his beard as much today as she had when she'd first seen it. Oh, I think it's a very good thing. She wiped her hands on her jeans. I'm going to head back to the house and shower before I make dinner. Try and miss me. She laughed. I don't even have to try. After her shower, she put on a pair of shorts and a tank top. She realized that she'd accomplished her goal in a much shorter time than she thought it would take. Once he'd gotten over being hurt, they had been able to move forward well, getting to know each other. Several times a day, they would each ask difficult questions of the other in an effort to get to know each other better. He still did things that made her crazy, but she was slowly training him out of them. If the trash was full, he felt the need to put any trash onto the counter instead of emptying the trash and taking it out. And the man apparently didn't know what a laundry hamper was used for. She found more clothes on the floor every day than she did in the hamper. Running a band bee meant she always had a load of laundry going, and if he could just get his things into the hamper, her life would be so much easier. She'd teach him, though. 
She was just happy he was a loving man who was so financially responsible. He still hadn't let her reimburse him for the snowmobiles. He paid any time they went anywhere. She was glad she'd found such a good man. She'd known women who had married just to have everything they owned taken from them. No, she'd really come out ahead of the game with Trey. He was using his spare time to fix up snowmobiles to help her with her winter tourist business, and she couldn't complain about that at all. No, he was working hard to show her that they were going to be a team in everything, and she had to appreciate that. After dinner, they sat on the swing as usual, and she snuggled close to him. Thanks for working so hard to make the business better. I know you have your own business you could be working on. He smiled. The band B is something we'll leave to our children. How could I not help out with it? Every day he liked the idea of having children with her a little more. He wanted to give them the kind of childhood he hadn't dreamed of having. She smiled, pressing a kiss into his shoulder. I still appreciate it. Grandma would be really proud of how it's progressing. She should be. You work hard to make this place a retreat for people. The only people I know of who have left unhappy are that old woman who ignored the sign and my sister. And I don't think my sister has ever been happy about anything. Is it mean of me to say I'm glad she's gone? She didn't want to upset him by talking badly about his sister, but that woman had been a piece of work. He pulled her closer to him. Not at all. She deliberately came here to upset us and break up our marriage. I really do hope she gets the help she needs. I'm glad we're mostly alone again. I mean, we have eight guests, but that's still mostly alone for living in a band B. He nodded. No one bothers us in the evenings for the most part. They just go off and do their own thing. The only bad thing is it's still a public place, and I can't grab you and kiss you on the front porch like I want to. You want to grab me and kiss me? He jumped to his feet and pulled her to hers. We can probably find a private place for that. She laughed. I bet there's a way to do that. She followed him at a half-jog as he pulled her into their bedroom. Does this mean you like the idea of kissing me? He laughed. I would have thought I'd made that clear. He pulled her against him, his mouth lowering to kiss her sweetly. Kissing is fun, even if you don't let me do more than that. He wasn't going to pass up any chance to touch and make love to his beautiful bride. What if I let you do more than that? Would that make kissing more fun? He nodded. Definitely, but it hasn't been a week yet, and I'm not trying to rush you. There was never really a set period of time. I just wanted to get to know you better without sex clouding everything. I do think we've done that. She felt like he knew her better than anyone but Sissy, and she wasn't sure anyone could know her better than her friend. Over twenty years of being best friends had bonded them in ways that couldn't be surpassed. He studied her carefully. Are you sure? I don't want you to do something you'll regret. She reached up and pulled his head down to hers, kissing him passionately. I'm sure. He groaned. Thank God. I wasn't sure I could kiss you without making love to you tonight. He pulled her tank top over her head and unfastened her bra. He wasn't going to give her a chance to change her mind. Moments later, he pushed her down on the bed, following her down with a grin. Asterisk. Cindy curled against Trey, her head on his shoulder. It's so much better with emotions involved. She had enjoyed making love from their first time together, but now that she had feelings for him, it was almost magical. He kissed her forehead. I'm a man, so I'm not supposed to agree with that, but I do. He turned to her more fully, stroking his hands over her. I've missed making love with you. I have, too. I've missed the physical closeness we had. She moved closer to him. Thanks for letting me take the time to get to know you. I know it's not what you wanted to do. It's not. Of course, it's not. But when you care for someone, and want to spend your life with them, you do what it takes to make them happy. 
So now when I ask you to do something crazy, you have to agree. He grinned at her. She laughed. Depends on what you ask me to do. Oh, I'm sure it'll involve chocolate, whipped cream, and video games. She shook her head. Go to sleep, crazy man. Five in the morning comes awfully early. Asterisk. While Cindy was cleaning the bathrooms after the weekend guests had checked out the following morning, her phone rang. Hello? She never bothered to check caller ID, because she knew she'd answer it regardless. She was in a service business, and she needed to always answer her phone. Cinderella. Cindy made a face at the name. Hi, Lachille. How are things in New York? She hadn't had a chance to talk to Lachille since the wedding. Just peachy. I need to make reservations for the weekend, though. You're coming to see us this weekend? Cindy was excited, but wary all at once. Why would Lachille be coming back to Wisconsin so soon? Yup. I want to check on you guys, but I also need to interview a potential groom. A potential groom in Blevins? Are you kidding me? There just weren't enough people in Blevins for there to be three looking for spouses, were there? Nah, this guy's not in Blevins. He's in the next town over, but I thought it would be nice if I stayed at the Band B and checked on you and Stephen. Are you two happy together? Cindy smiled. We had a rough first week, but I think we're doing better now. Oh? Tell me about it. Cindy briefly went over what had happened with Penny and Jean, laughing at Lachille's response. Oh, good gravy, Cindy. You know you should have called me. Or better yet, called the cops. Penny sounds like she needs to spend some time in a locked ward wearing a straight jacket. How do you find these people? You matched me up with her brother. Remember? She couldn't believe Lachille was blaming her for Penny's bad behavior. Really, she didn't go find the woman. Oh, well, that's not my fault. I never met the nutty sister. Cindy sighed. I wish I hadn't. She didn't tell Lachille the problems she'd caused in her own marriage by withholding sex after they'd had a wedding night. She knew she should have handled that differently. We'll talk when I get there. I think I'll be flying in on Friday around noon. Interviewing half days Saturday and Sunday. Tell Sissy to make sure she makes me some of her fried cheese curds. I feel like it's been years since I had some. I will. Cindy smiled at the phone in her hand. Do you want me to send Trey to pick you up at the airport on Friday? No, I know the boy needs to work. I'll get there. It's not like I'm afraid to drive in Wisconsin. Yeah, I guess even Madison traffic is nothing compared to where you're used to driving in. Driving? Are you kidding me? I drive in Montana, but I don't drive in New York. You've been here. You know what it's like. I'd rather stick a fork in my eye than try to fight traffic. Don't be daft, girl. Cindy laughed. I've missed you, Lachille. I'm glad you're going to come see us. We'll go to the bowling alley on Friday night. Sissy always brings a live band in. Count me in. I'll wear my dancing shoes. And tell Trey to be ready to swing me around the dance floor. I'll let him know. Asterisk. Cindy went to the office where Trey was working and knocked loudly. They only had a couple of guests that day, so the house was mostly quiet. When he answered the door in his underwear, she laughed. I'm glad you started wearing boxers. They look lots better. He grinned, pushing her against the door and kissing her. Did you come to try out the couch? He asked, his lips at her neck. Or did you just want to ogle me in my sexy underwear? She shook her head. Not this time. She giggled as he nipped her neck. I came to tell you that we're having a special guest on Friday. Trey lifted his head, looking down at her. Not my mother. He couldn't imagine anything could be more disastrous for their marriage than his mother coming to town. Cindy laughed out loud. 
Nope. No more in-laws in this house, at least for a few months. Oh, good. He resumed his exploration of her neck. Lachiel is coming back. He raised his head again, his eyes wary. Why? She said something about interviewing a new groom in the area. Cindy shrugged. I was surprised there was someone else in the area wanting to use matrimony. I guess word of our marriage got out. He didn't meet her eyes. I guess. He pulled back, walking over to the couch and sitting, patting the spot beside him. She'll be here Friday? She's coming in on Friday and staying all weekend. She'll interview Saturday and Sunday and stay with us. She wants to see Sissy on Friday night at the bowling alley. That works. He stroked his hand up her thigh. Are you sure you don't want to try out the couch? It seems like a perfectly good couch. I've slept on it, of course, but there are such better uses for a comfortable piece of furniture. He leaned in and kissed her again, trying to change her mind. Cindy sighed. You're crazy, you know that? I think that's why I like you so much. As long as we know the reason, nothing more matters much. She sighed. I'm going to go tell Sissy the news while we have lunch. Do you want to go with me? Or do you want to make your own? She hated knowing that he was on his own for lunch every day, but he really did seem to prefer it. I'll handle my own. I don't want to interfere with your time with your friend. Besides, the faster I get my work for the day done, the sooner I can go out and work on the snowmobiles. You're really enjoying that, aren't you? He nodded. A lot more than I realized I would. I'm so glad. I worry that there's not much to do here. You're used to living in the big city. He shrugged. I get out more here than I ever did at home. I had my guy friends that I'd game with, but for the most part, we'd just go to someone's house. Seriously, I'm not missing anything. I have you with me, and that's more than I ever dreamed I'd have. She frowned. Did you really think you'd never find someone? Cindy had worried about when she'd find someone, but never if. She hated that he had been so unsure of himself. He nodded. Yeah, I really did. Having a sister like Penny really messes with your head. She was one of the most popular girls in school, and I couldn't imagine why any guy would be willing to go on a first date with her, let alone more than that. She treated them all like garbage, and they came back for more. I thought that's how girls were supposed to treat their boyfriends, and it kind of turned me off of marriage. So what made you talk to Lachiel? He grinned. I did her website. I called the different couples she was using to be her testimonials. I did it so I could get quotes from them, but I talked a lot longer than I should have. They told me their stories, and I realized that love like I had in my head really existed. He probably shouldn't admit it to her, but if he didn't talk to her about things, who could he talk to? What about your parents? Were they not loving? He shrugged. They love each other, I'm sure. They're just not demonstrative about it. They don't hold hands or kiss in public or even in front of their kids. They'd be mortified if they saw us kissing at the bowling alley, which we'd done once or twice. He couldn't keep his lips off her, and he wasn't ashamed of it. They didn't want to come to the wedding? Not that she needed her in-laws around, but she wished they could have been there for him. My mother said it was the dumbest thing she'd ever heard of, meeting at the altar. And Dad didn't want to rock the boat. It doesn't matter. But it did matter. It hurt him that they hadn't cared enough to come. We're not going to be like that with our children. He shook his head. No, we're not. She sighed, resting her head against his shoulder. I'm glad you didn't listen to them and came here to marry me anyway. Lachiel did a good job with us. He kissed the top of her head. She did. Chapter 10 Lachiel's arrival on Friday was a moment to be remembered. The woman couldn't seem to stay on her feet for anything. 
She tripped getting out to the car, landing face first in a mud puddle that was left from the rain the day before. Then when she finally made it to the house, she tripped over the door jam, landing on her face again. Cindy clucked over her, dabbing hydrogen peroxide on her wounds. Stop trying to break my house. Lachiel laughed. I only ever break myself. Don't worry about that. She used the washcloth Cindy had given her to wash the mud off her face and arms, while Cindy worked on the scrapes on her legs. Well then don't break yourself in my house. Good gravy, girl, do you think I'm trying to break myself? Lachiel shook her head, her purple hair fluttering this way and that. So tell me about Trey. Is he perfect for you? Cindy smiled. You need another ego stroke on your matchmaking skills? She knew Lachiel was proud of the couple she'd set up. I'll take all the strokes I can get, ego, or otherwise. He's pretty darn awesome. I've never met anyone like him. Cindy sighed. He's truly a good, loving man, which is a shock when you look at the family he came from. Yeah, we talked about all that in the interview. I knew he needed a woman who knew how to love. I'm glad you picked me for him. Not that I think I'm perfect or anything, but I do know how to love. I know you do. I could see that the day I met you. You and Sissy have a closer bond than most sisters. We do. Sometimes I think I'm still spending a bit too much time with Sissy. I don't want Trey to feel ignored. No matter how many times he told her it didn't bother him that she ate lunch with her friend every day and not with him, she felt guilty for it. She felt like she should be with him even though she hadn't been raised to be together constantly. Lachiel frowned. Have you brought up your worries about it to him? He's not the kind of man who would lie to you about how he feels. He says he doesn't mind that we meet for lunch every day. I've invited him to go with me, and even offered to stay home and cook for him, but he says he doesn't mind that we do that. He doesn't mind then. Truly. Cindy nodded slowly. She knew Lachiel had spent a great deal of time with him, learning about him, and she must have done well, because she'd matched him up with her. I'll take your word for it. Trey walked into the kitchen then, taking in the first aid kit on the table. He looked at Lachiel, who was sitting in a chair with his wife hovering over her. You all right? Lachiel nodded. I just seem to be spending more time kissing the ground than standing on my feet today. It's really not that unusual for me, to be honest with you. Trey eyed the older woman uncertainly. The last time he'd seen her, she'd taken him to task over trying to sneak into the bride's room at the church. Would she still be angry with him for that? Did you have a good flight? he asked hesitantly. Oh, stop beating around the bush. I'm not going to eat you. Just because I had to get on to you at your wedding doesn't mean I'm still mad at you. Cindy bit back a grin, looking back and forth between them. Why did you have to get on to him? He didn't tell you? Lachiel asked. He was trying to sneak into the bride's room to see you before you were married. He knew the rules, and ignored them, to try to disobey. I had to set Sam on him as a babysitter. Cindy laughed out loud. So you wouldn't have married me if you hadn't liked what you saw? Is that the deal? Trey shook his head adamantly. Of course not. I was just going insane not knowing. It was nothing about whether or not you were pretty enough. It was who you were. He couldn't bear the thought of her thinking she would have been rejected if she hadn't been pretty enough for him. It wasn't true at all. Uh huh. Cindy winked at him, not bothered at all. It was Lachiel's rule they didn't see each other, not hers. You ready to see Sissy? she asked Lachiel. Of course. I think I might have the man for her all picked out. You think? But you're not sure. Cindy was very interested in Lachiel's process, especially where Sissy was involved. I need to talk to him a bit more, but I hope so. Cindy grinned. Me, too. It would be wonderful if she found her match. 
Is that why you're here? To interview a potential groom for Sissy? Was it possible he was someone who already lived in the area? You know I can't answer that. Are you crazy, woman? Cindy sighed. I wouldn't tell her. Oh, yes you would. Do I look like I just drifted into town on the back of a turnip truck? There's nothing you keep from that girl. Lachille glared at Cindy, as if she were offended at the mere idea that Cindy would keep something from Sissy. I've kept several secrets from her lately, Cindy protested. Lachille rolled her eyes. I'm not talking secrets about your sex life, although I'm glad that part of your relationship is going well. Cindy looked over her shoulder at Trey when Lachille said that, and she did her best to control her giggle when she realized the tips of his ears were even red he was blushing so profusely. Do you mind eating dinner at the bowling alley, or do you want me to fix something here? Cindy asked as she put away the first aid kit. She didn't mind cooking, but she had a feeling Lachille would want another burger. Oh, let's just eat there. I'm craving one of those burgers with the bacon and cheese cooked right inside it. And the cheese curds. Why did you get me addicted to those things when I can't find them in New York? Oh, I'm sure you can find them somewhere in that huge city. Cindy had a hard time believing they didn't have cheese curds anywhere in New York, but she really hadn't looked when they'd visited. Lachille sighed. Yeah, but just like I won't eat pizza outside of New York, I can't eat fried cheese curds outside of Wisconsin. It would feel like a sin. Cindy laughed. Well, that doesn't sound like you can't find them, just that you're too picky then, doesn't it? Lachille wrinkled her nose. Whatever. What time are we going to the bowling alley? I need a nap after all that travel. This but does not belong smushed into an airplane seat. We'll leave around 5.30 or so. Band will get there at six, and it'll be easier to get a table. Asterisk. Trey ended up driving them to the bowling alley that night in Cindy's car. Lachille was a bit too sore from her tumbles to be able to walk the distance comfortably. Will Sissy sing for us tonight? Trey asked. He loved the idea of hearing her again. He was surprised to realize he looked forward to when she sang. Lachille looked back and forth between them. Is Sissy as good as I hear she is? Cindy frowned at Lachille. Who told you Sissy was good? Lachille froze for a moment, and then said, Oh, just heard it when I was here for the wedding. Cindy narrowed her eyes as she looked at Lachille. There's something you're not telling me, and I really don't like it. She slipped her hand into trays. Do you know what she's hiding? He avoided her eyes, instead staring straight ahead. I haven't talked to her since she was here for our wedding. What could I possibly know? Cindy wasn't convinced, but she didn't say anything. Lachille saw Sissy from across the room and ran toward her, calling out, Booby Bump. She's sure moving fast for someone who fell twice this afternoon, Cindy said with a frown. What do you know that I don't? She elbowed him in the side, hoping he'd spill his guts. He had to be hiding something. She could see it all over his face. He shrugged. What could I possibly know that you don't know? You know everything. She didn't respond to that, knowing he was evading her question. Again. She moved to an empty booth and waited until Lachille came back. Did you order drinks? Oh, yeah. Sissy said she already knew. She's getting me the same thing I got last time, and getting you your usual. Wanted to know if you want corn dogs again, Stephen? Trey sighed. I really prefer to be called Trey, and no, I think I want to try the cheeseburger you ladies were going on and on about. He felt like he was missing out on something by not getting the burger. Lachille hurried back to tell Sissy about Trey's change of order. Sissy glared at him. You order the same thing every time in my bowling alley, she yelled across the almost empty room at him. I'm being adventurous, he called back. He was amazed at how comfortable he felt with Sissy. He'd never really had a female friend before, and he hoped that Sissy was as comfortable with him as he was with her. 
Be adventurous in someone else's bowling alley, she called back, a wide grin on her face. She hurried into the kitchen. Lachiel scooted into the booth across from Cindy and Trey. I like it here. It reminds me of home. I really think you should move home. You could run your business from anywhere. Lachiel sighed. Maybe someday. Matrimony is such a small fraction of our income. My practice is still most of it. Eventually, I'd love it if matrimony took over, but for now, I need to pay the bills. Besides, as much as I love hooking up lost souls with their mates, I like the way I help people in my practice as well. Cindy shrugged. I'm sure you help them a lot. The bit of counseling you did with me as part of my interview was a huge help. I wasn't technically supposed to do that. Once a counselor, always a counselor. Lachille grinned at Sissy as she put the drinks on the table. You remembered my extra ice. Of course I did. I remember everything everyone orders. It's a gift and a curse. Sissy glared at Trey, but didn't say anything to him about his order change. I can see that, Lachille answered. After Sissy hurried away again, Lachille looked at Trey. So tell me what you love most about Cindy. Trey laughed. What's not to love? She's beautiful, sweet, even tempered when you're not stealing her coffee. Lachille raised an eyebrow at Cindy. You won't share your coffee? Cindy glared at Trey. You had to tell on me, didn't you? Lachille grinned. Cindy, what do you love about Trey? Are you counseling us, Lachille? Cindy asked. She hadn't expected these questions. Lachille shook her head. Nope. I just don't often get a chance to sit down with the couples I match so quickly after the wedding. I'm having fun. Cindy thought for a moment. I love that he's so selfless. He's always doing things to help me and my business. I love that he learns quickly. He only took one sip out of my coffee mug before he learned to get his own. And I love that he treats me as if I'm the most important woman on the face of the earth. I've never had anyone act as if I was special before. Sissy stopped at the table then with a tray filled with baskets of food. She put burgers in front of everyone and two baskets of cheese curds in the middle of the table. Be right back with refills on drinks. You are special, Trey said, ignoring the interruption from Sissy. You're an easy woman to love, Cindy Zane, even when you are withholding sex. Lachille looked between them. You're withholding sex, Cindy? Cindy shook her head, her eyes still on Trey. No, that was last week. You love me? Trey nodded. I thought it was obvious. If I didn't love you, I'd still be drinking from your coffee mug every morning. I love you, too. I never dreamed I'd tell you for the first time in a bowling alley in front of Lachille, but whatever. I love you, Trey Zane. You have the ability to make me crazier than any man in the world, but you can make me happier than anyone I've ever known. I'm so glad you're in my life. Trey leaned over and kissed her, snagging a fry out of her basket and popping it into his mouth. Cindy blinked at him. Why are you stealing my fries when you have a basket full of your own? Just seeing if it makes you crazy when people steal your French fries like it makes you crazy when they drink your coffee. Cindy rolled her eyes at him before turning her attention back to Lachille, who had tears streaming down her face. What's wrong, Lachille? Lachille used a napkin from the table to mop the tears off her face. I've never gotten to see a couple I matched together say they love each other for the first time before. It was better than any old sappy movie. Cindy laughed. I'm so glad you approve. Oh, I do. And now that you love each other, you need to start adding to my collection of matrimony munchkins. You know how I love babies. I hope you're not going to say you need to watch us making those munchkins, because that's not happening, Lachille. Cindy shook her head at the older woman to emphasize her words. Nah. That can be private. 
Just make sure I get an invitation to the baby shower. Lashiel sighed. Another happy match. Asterisk. Later that night, Cindy asked Trey, What exactly are you and Lashiel hiding from me? It's going to make me crazy. Trey sighed. It's not my secret to tell. So, there is a secret. I knew it. Don't let that stop you. I really can't say. I promised. Fine. Don't tell me. See if I care. Cindy rolled over in bed, so her back was to him. He trailed his fingers over her soft back. Don't be that way. I have a feeling you're going to know soon enough anyway. He pressed a trail of kisses along her shoulder. So why can't I know now? He moved over behind her, kissing the back of her neck. I'd tell you if I could. Fine. She kept staring at the wall. Why didn't you tell me you loved me before? Trey sighed. I had it in my head that you were supposed to say it first. I know that's stupid, but it's how I felt. I do love you, Cindy. More than I could ever express. And I want to have those munchkins with you. Cindy laughed and rolled back to face him. We need to have a little girl. Why a girl? So Sissy's daughter will have someone to tell all her secrets to, of course. Trey frowned. You know Sissy's not married yet, right? Oh, it's only a matter of time now that Dr. Lachiel is on the case. She'll have Sissy married in a matter of months. Weeks, probably. Trey brushed his lips across hers. If you think it's going to happen that fast, maybe we should start working on those munchkins right away. I think that's a brilliant idea. Girl or boy, she loved the idea of having children with him. Epilogue Cindy hung up the phone and hurried to Trey's office, pounding on the door. Let me in. Trey answered the door, standing there in his boxers as usual. I just did you three hours ago. Can't wait till bedtime? Cindy hurried in and shut the door behind her, shaking her head at him. Sissy just called. Wedding is in two weeks. She was practically bouncing up and down she was so excited. Lachiel found her someone? That's great. I'm meeting her for lunch in an hour, and we're going to shop for dresses. Can you check in the couple that's supposed to be here around three? Like with pants on? She looked at his bare legs, pointedly. She had never known anyone who rejected clothing as often as he did. Trey sighed. The things you ask of me. Wearing pants, indeed. You can do it, she said with a grin. Fine. I'll wear pants while you run all over finding a wedding dress. You're the matron of honor, I assume? Yup. I can't wait. And you know what the best part of the whole thing is? They're getting married right here in Blevins. I offered the barn for the reception, but she wanted to use the bowling alley. Said her dad would never forgive her otherwise. Truly she didn't care where the wedding was held as long as it was soon. Sissy was getting married. He probably wouldn't. Trey grinned at her excitement. It'll be nice not to be the third wheel with you too. You're not the third wheel. Sissy is. But it doesn't matter now, because we'll have four wheels. I can't wait. Cindy threw her arms around him. I don't think I was this excited when I found out that I was getting married. I'm glad you're happy for your friend. I am, too. Trey couldn't wait until Sissy saw who she would be marrying. Bob was a good man, and he deserved the best. Other than Cindy, Sissy was it. Bob had no idea what he was in for.